they're out there. Hiding in the garage? Or maybe up in the attic, next to the wrapping paper. Old computers. Some might still have some use left in them. Others are long past saving. But there they sit, what experts call end-of-life technology, and what the rest of us call junk. I've got an old computer at home, dude. It's kind of non-operational. Very old. Um, I was thinking of kind of just letting it sit in my room for the rest of my life. It's not just computers. Another growing problem is cell phones. They're often replaced after only a couple of years. The average household has at least one or two um, end-of-life retired mobiles in their drawers somewhere in their homes, and um, they don't bother to take them back. It's an even bigger issue for businesses, which often replace large amounts of technology all at once. Throwing away end-of-life technology is a wasteful, dangerous, and in many places, illegal practice. Computers have toxic materials like lead, mercury, and selenium, which can damage, among other things, the brain, heart, and kidneys. Improper recycling can expose workers to poisons that can damage the brain and lungs. Among the many horrors of the 9-11 collapse of the World Trade Center was pulverization of 20,000 desktop computers, which released 20 tons of toxic lead and heavy metals into the air. And if environmental hazards aren't convincing enough, Peter Benison of Waste Management and Recycling Products says data security should be. We can issue them documentation that says it was either physically destroyed or the data was destroyed in compliance with the Department of Defense standards. An IEEE conference on end-of-life technology tackled this complicated issue from all sides. AT&T's Michelle Blasick argues that businesses that buy technology should be more demanding consumers. I think um, industry, especially customers, um, should require um, the companies that sell them equipment to take it back. Stephen Rogers of Sweden's Ericsson Corporation says in the European Union, take it back is the law. Manufacturers who have put products on the market are responsible at the end of life to take these products back from the customer free of charge. Carnegie Mellon University's Scott Matthews is working for additional recycling laws because even sort of hardcore environmentalists don't make the right decision. So it's it's nearly impossible to expect that the average American consumer would ever do that. While there's no such federal law in the U.S., some state and local governments are either banning some computer disposal or adding fees to help with recycling, or both. Blasek says there is also pressure on companies who buy technology to recycle them responsibly. That's what your customers and your investors care about right now. It's a very important issue among the investor groups. So maybe large bins of computers might be on the road to recycling, but what about the one at your house? Well, the individual consumer has is, is, is been a challenge uh, for our industry because of the uh, logistics in collecting you know, that one piece of equipment that a consumer may generate that's uh, obsolete or broken and that they want to make sure is handled properly. Trying to fill that void is a company called Green Citizen. The electronic industry is a low gross margin business and with a high obsolescence of new product introductions. That two combination keep electronic company constantly on a treadmill of inventing the next piece of equipment and not be able to have enough resources to devote into reclaiming the materials. This San Francisco area operation looks like any other store, except here you bring things back. Brought in a lot of CD games and a lot of just blank CDs unused ink cartridges, uh, a printer with no home. Their mission? Make recycling as simple as shopping. Clean your stuff and an amount which is free. It's a total of $12. All right. It's very difficult to find places to recycle electronic properly. Green Citizen Center is here you know, in Palo Alto behind one of the popular electronic stores and will open seven days a week. Places like this are, are very important, um, and I think they need to grow, and they need to be much more, uh, much more prevalent. You know, I, I only found out about them because I live on this street. Green Citizen founder James Cow says he got into the business because he's worried about electronic waste being dumped abroad. It's very difficult to know when you recycle whether the items are properly handled so it doesn't cause additional uh, dumping globally. 
Not only do they sort the items for easy recycling, they account for each piece of equipment they bring in. I get a in blue inventory tag. It is applied next to the barcode to denote that this item here has been put into the Green Citizen system. Rogers agrees that electronic waste requires special handling. I mean, we can't just use um, um, the old recycler, which was two man in a dock. You know, that doesn't work any longer. It has to be, it has to be an approved recycler who's preferably ISO certified and follows all the environmental regulations as well. Exhibitors at the IEEE conference reinforced that idea and presented their innovative approaches. We're actually taking the shredding and separation of electronic scrap to the next level so that we can get complete recovery of composite materials that are normally left over at the end of a shredding operation. New emphasis and new technologies in recycling. It's a way to get computers and other electronics out of the attics, out of the garbage bins, and on the way to still newer uses.